Darwin's famous voyage in the 19th century, he witnessed as their ship, the HMS Beagle, became overwhelmed by hundreds of spiders despite being anchored 60 miles off the coast of Argentina. How did they get there? Darwin realized that what he had witnessed was spiders ballooning up into the air by their released thread, allowing them to paraglide through the air. Originally, Darwin believed ballooning was achieved by thermal air currents and the silk being acted upon by aerodynamic drag from wind. However, thermal air currents didn't explain why the threads were spread out and how heavier spiders could shoot rapidly up while the air was relatively still. Not only this, but gossamer spiders have been found to be able to achieve altitudes of at least several kilometers. This question leads to another theory of electrostatic repulsion, which researchers today have worked to prove. Gossamer spider is a term used to define all spiders that take part in the act of ballooning, also called kiting. The name comes from the gossamer threads which the spider releases to achieve ballooning. Arachnids have filiform sensilla, which are elongated external CT known as chicobothria, which are the most sensitive biological sensors. Chicobothria are mainly located on the tibia of the walking legs that allow for the best detection of airborne vibrations and air currents. The amplitude of the different CT links on the spider shifts from longer to shorter when frequencies are changed. This causes rapid vibrations in the neurons when spiders are wanting to take off. During the 1800s, there was a debate on whether spiders were able to fly due to an electric field versus wind current, and wind won as it was the more obvious option. However, our paper proves their argument to be wrong. The research paper we found about gossamer spiders was titled Electric Fields Elicit Ballooning in Spiders. The study was completed by Erica Morley and Daniel Robert and was published in July of 2018 in Current Biology. Inspired by Darwin's observations of these spiders, the scientists tested the hypothesis that electric fields corresponding with the atmospheric potential gradient can be detected by spiders and are sufficient to stimulate the act of ballooning. They observed two main behaviors during this study, both of which resulted in the spiders becoming airborne. The first behavior was the dropping of a silk drag line, then extruding, or expelling, of ballooning silk. The second was tiptoeing, which they defined as the upward extension of the most anterior body section of the spider and the subsequent extrusion of silk. To do this, the scientists created polycarbonate boxes that limited air motion and placed them on anti-vibration tables in an acoustically isolated room. These boxes had two aluminum plates, which were used to create the electrical fields, and they also had a takeoff site where the spider was placed during the trial. Each spider was subjected to three treatments in random order, and the behavior was recorded and assessed through video footage. Analysis of gossamer spiders' mechanosensory hairs, called trechobothria, were the emphasis of observation. Through the use of these hairs, gossamer spiders were found to detect electric fields at levels under natural atmospheric conditions. The researchers found that electric field and airflow stimuli elicited distinct changes in the velocity and displacement of spiders' trichobothria. These changes in spider activity resulted in a significant increase in spiders' ballooning activity when in the presence of electric fields. The researchers concluded, supporting the hypothesis that ballooning spiders become airborne via atmospheric electrostatic forces, disproving the competing hypothesis of ballooning being caused by aerodynamic drag from wind. The researchers continued their conclusion, suggesting that the mechanosensory hairs of many arthropod species may exhibit the additional function electroreception. Ballooning is so important when it comes to the dispersal for gossamer spiders. It helps us to understand biomass, gene flow, species distribution, population dynamics, and their ecological resilience to random behavioral changes. And with the improvement of our understanding of how arthropods detect electromagnetic fields, we can better predict the effect seasonal biflows can have on transporting things like pathogens, nutrients, and agricultural pests. And it is ultimately important in global ecology because of the impact it can retain on the diversity and composition of ecosystems. Whether you find this interesting or terrifying, the science behind ballooning and the effects it can have is absolutely amazing.